Hi guys, welcome to Santiago, Chile. Join me as I explore the city where city meets mountains. I first flew from JFK to Lima, Peru, and transferred there to Santiago. The journey took about 14 hours. I flew LATAM Airlines. I redeemed both of these flights with Alaska Miles. If you're interested in how I did it, leave a comment below, and I will show you later how to do it. Did you know that Chilean wines are really famous? I'm sure you have had it before, right? If you are a wine lover, I even did my very own Chilean wine tasting right on the plane. More on that later. The geographic location of Santiago is so unique. It is surrounded by the grand and magnificent Andes Mountains. They create a breathtaking backdrop to the cityscape. It was so pleasing to see it from the plane. After 14 hours, I finally landed. I had to prearrange a pickup as Uber is not allowed at the airport. Not long after, I was checked into the W Hotel. They gave me a beautiful junior suite looking over the tallest building in South America, the Grand Torre Santiago. I find the area very safe and easy to walk around even after dinner. They have a rooftop bar that are very famous for looking over the sunsets, but unfortunately, I didn't get to see out of the three nights there due to the weather. But I will definitely go back next time. So I'm trying. This chili and pisco sour is my very first time, obviously, doing it in Chile. There's always a debate between which is better, the Peruvian pisco sour or the Chilean pisco sour. But to be honest with you, I like the Peruvian better. Finally arrived here. Um, I think this is number 29 restaurant in the world. But um, to me, it's sometimes not about. What number they are, but if the food is actually to my liking, I arrived at Parago in at Santiago, Chile, Chile. So this is something to take home. This at it is so beautiful. This represents Chile. It's it's so beautiful. The whole menu will be consisting of like different region from the country, like with all the dishes that they're gonna serve. This is for us to take home. It's so pretty. So they also gave me some sparkling wine to welcome me. Yes, oh, but I forgot to take picture. And this is the Chilean gin with tonic and what berry? Mackey berry. It ended up as one of the best meal I've ever had. The next morning, I started my journey to Valparaiso, a charming coastal city town about an hour and a half away from Santiago. I went to a beachside market. They were selling the freshest ceviche. I even got to taste a crab meat one. They were so fresh and so sweet. They also have the freshest fruit juices and smoothie. One thing you cannot miss in Chile is the empanadas. It was definitely a very local place, not very touristy, because it was very fishy, and I don't really see other tourists there except us. As we walk further down the beach, you can see amazing guns flying everywhere in the sky. They were catching their food. They have extremely good eyesight. They are really good at hunting. And if you go near the coast, they are all over you on top of your head. It was quite funny. Also, you might see some sea lions like I did, playing in the water and sun tanning on the beach. They were so aggressive, fighting with each other for the food. It was so fun to see. To be honest, I never thought I would see so many sea lions and fell in Chile. This was the last thing I expected. Got so close. Los Paseros Beach is a beautiful seaside getaway near Vina del Mar. I heard it's very beautiful during sunny days. It doesn't hurt to take a dip into the beautiful Pacific water, doesn't it? Yeah.
Let me quickly show you Plaza de Amars. It has so many iconic attractions that you must go when you're in Santiago, but it can get quite shady there. The central post office here, right in Santiago. It's making me very nervous because of everything that everyone says about the area. So I'm just gonna take a quick one. I don't want to turn my phone out, um, but it is really pretty. Let's get back to Fela Pariso. It is such a unique city that it is so special, so colorful. I've never seen something like this. First, you have to get up there by the famous funicular. There are these little cozy wooden cars that are like very vintage and old, but it was a very fun experience. The ride was quite quick. The view was pretty nice, but literally by the time you know, you're already there. Sur Alegre is a special part of Valparaiso. It's known for its bright and colorful streets. The houses are painted in vibrant colors. I had never seen a more colorful town in my life. And now it's time to grab some lunch. I am Ocha of Valparaiso. I came up by the Venecula. It's so beautiful up here. Now I'm the way for lunch. Uh, I, I ordered a seafood chowder and uh, I hope it's really good. That's what I heard. So pretty. It's so pretty here. This is really nice. I'm going to go Honestly, I was so impressed by all these morals on the streets. I wanted to take pictures of all of them. It is also a cool neighborhood full of art and culture. You can visit art galleries to see the local artwork and learn about the Valparaiso history at the museums and cultural center. There are also these cute little shops where you can buy handmade crafts and plenty of restaurant, ice cream places, and coffee shop if you want to take a break. I bought a lot of magnets because I collect them everywhere in the world. It is a place where everyone can find something they like. Trust me, you really want to go there. We ended the day by going to a vineyard for some wine tasting. What's better than that? Chilean wine is highly regarded for several reasons. First, Chile's unique geographic locations such as the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Ocean create favorable conditions for grape cultivation, resulting in exceptional vineyards. Let me stop talking and just taste. Arrived at San Esteban Vineyard. Another day, another vineyard. Let's continue on why Chile makes such exceptional wines. The country's diverse microclimate allows them to grow many different types of grapes. Also, the winemakers use a mix of modern and traditional methods to create different flavors that caters to different people around the world. So by now, if you still haven't tried Chilean wines, Please go try it for yourself. The value is excellent. Then I continue the day to the Inca Lagoon. It is a breathtaking natural wonder sitting in the world famous Andes Mountains. The crystal clear turquoise water, snow capped peaks made a setting so serene it was quite surreal to see. They had a really good restaurant by the hotel there. I highly recommend it. The fish was really good. Hey, you, you don't want it? Why you don't want it? <laughs> they don't like it. They don't like me. Why you guys don't want mine? <laughs> mine is better. <laughs> yeah, there's some. Please take it. <laughs> Second try. <laughs> they didn't like the first kind. They literally walked by me. <laughs> Well, the 
pajamas, ice cage, and the very rich, you know, connected uh, Russia, what is today Russia and Alaska. That's how many animals and ancestors of the In the middle of the city in Santiago, Chile, it's actually a really nice city for people who don't know and when they think of South America, they always think that it is like messy, dangerous, or, oh, you know what, I mean, the stereotype. But if you can just see around me, of course, that it's like about the neighborhoods too. I will say I'm in a really good neighborhood, me and my hotel. I stay at the W, so sometimes it's about that also. It depends on what neighborhood you stay in. Uh, I think as a solo traveler, you need to stay in a good neighborhood. There was one time I stayed, actually my very first time in Paris about over 10 years ago. I stayed in this really shady neighborhood. It's near the train station, one of the biggest train stations. I was so scared. But you know, we all learn, right? Finally, I had arrived at the Grand Torre building. So since I was already there, of course, I'm going to buy tickets to go to the observatory deck which is called the Sky Costanera. It is located on the 61st floor of the Grand Torre building, which is the tallest building in Latin America. Like any other observatory deck around the world, you will see amazing landscape from the top, but there's something you cannot see elsewhere. You cannot see the Andes Mountains. To conclude, Santiago was okay, but next time I definitely need to fly to Easter Island. It's now time to fly to Brazil to see my last seven wonders of the world. Thank you so much for watching!